Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarbul Fatih. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular stipulating the official public holiday on the Kingdom's National Day and the 18th anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The government's ministries, directorates and institutions will close on Saturday and Sunday, December 16th and 17th, whereas Saturday will be compensated with a day off on Monday, December the 18th. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict Number 38 of 2017, replacing a member at the National Anti-Narcotics Committee. The capital governor will be replaced with the southern governor in the committee membership. The Minister of Interior has been tasked to implement this edict, which becomes effective from the date of its issuance and is to be published in the official gazette. In a letter addressed to the world on Human Rights Day held this year under the slogan Let Us All Stand for Human Rights, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa affirmed that the values of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights have been and still are expressions of the development of human civilization and its endeavor for a peaceful world. His Royal Highness stressed that the current challenges facing the world, at the forefront of which terrorism and extremist ideas are a violation of human rights as they affect the rights of people to live in peace and security. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, shares the world its efforts in the field of protecting human rights and affirmed its keenness to fulfill its international obligations, recognizing the importance of protecting human dignity and achieving human coexistence. The Prime Minister pointed out that the celebration of World Human Rights Day coincides with the celebration of 70 years since the adoption of the universal. Declaration of Human Rights as an important international document that expressed the desire of, human of, of humans of a world of freedom, justice and peace. His Royal Highness noted that Bahrain prides itself on having a distinguished human rights record based on constitutional and legal foundations that raise the value of these rights and consolidate them within society in a framework that enhances national unity and preserves the nation's security, stability and cohesion. The Prime Minister noted that Bahrain is an active member in international gatherings that promote cooperation between civilizations and cultures and that Bahrain never hesitates to play any regional or international role that provides elements of a secure life that will enhance people's ability to achieve sustainable development. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain's respect of human rights stems from the values of Islam that stresses the importance of communication between people. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the Bahraini society's rich cultural, intellectual and religious components, which has become a model of coexistence based on loyalty to the country and the desire to develop and prosper. His Royal Highness stressed that the promotion of justice, equality, peace, human rights, tolerance and the fight against terrorism and violence is the way to achieve sustainable development, security and peace in the world. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met the newly appointed Ambassador of the French Republic to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Cécile Lounge. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the steady growth of relations between Bahrain and France. In this regard, His Royal Highness recalled His Majesty King Hamad's various official visits to France, which contributed to increased cooperation and coordination across various areas, in particular within the cultural, tourism, commercial, investment environment and infrastructure sectors. His Royal Highness wished the newly appointed ambassador success in her new role, offering Bahrain's full support to ongoing initiatives des designed to further strengthen bilateral ties. The meeting also discussed regional and international issues of interest. His Royal Highness noted France's important role promoting in promoting peace and security within the region and their participation in international efforts to combat terrorism and extremism. For her part, she expressed a gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and praise the support to advancing bilateral ties. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met yesterday the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Japan Taro Kono on the sidelines of the 2017 Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and the Minister for Foreign Affairs discussed the strength of bilateral ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Japan, which have been nurtured through regular high-level visits and continuous cooperation. His Royal Highness and the Minister for Foreign Affairs went on to discuss opportunities to further strengthen ties between the two countries, in particular through the development of economic and trade partnerships. The two sides then discussed a range of regional and international issues of common interest. Taro Kono expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's unwavering support for Bahrain to Japan relations and cooperation, wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain further prosperity and development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met yesterday the United Kingdom Secretary of State for Defence Gavin Williamson and the UK's Minister of State for the Middle East Alistair Burns on the sidelines of the 2017 Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness and the UK's delegation discussed the historic ties between Bahrain and the UK, highlighting that both countries' commitment to regular exchanges of visits only serves to strengthen bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness both of the complex challenges that the region faces, in particular the threat posed by extremist groups and theocratic regimes. In this regard, His Royal Highness went on to stress Bahrain's commitment to providing logistical and strategic support to international alliances combating terrorism, including active participation in both the campaign against Daesh and the Saudi-led coalition to restore stability and security in Yemen. His Royal Highness noted that Bahrain's long-standing security cooperation with the UK is underscored by the UK naval support facility located in Mina Salman port, which plays an important role supporting regional security. The Secretary of State for Defense Gavin Williamson highlighted the success of Bahrain's economic development program and diversification efforts while affirming the UK's commitment to further strengthening bilateral ties across trade and the economy. His Royal Highness and the UK delegation went on to discuss new opportunities to intensify cooperation across defense, intelligence and maritime security. The UK's Chief of the Defense Staff Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Peach, Defence Senior Advisor in the Middle East, Lieutenant General John Lorimer, and the former Defence Senior Advisor in the Middle East, Lieutenant General Tom Beckett, were also present during the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met yesterday the Vice President of a Worldwide Public Sector for Amazon Web Services AWS, Teresa Carlson, and CEO of IronNet Cybersecurity General Keith Alexander on the sidelines of the 2017 Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Teresa Carlson, and Keith Alexander highlighted that Bahrain and the United States continue to develop strong public and private sector partnerships across a range of areas including cybersecurity and ICT. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also highlighted that by leading the expansion of regional cloud capacity alongside AWS, the kingdom builds on ongoing efforts to transform the role of the public sector from the central driver of development to a regulator and active partner with the private sector in economic development. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Teresa Carlson and Keith Alexander also discussed ways that, could it, that cloud technology can strengthen cybersecurity a crucial element of international efforts to eliminate terrorism and its illicit funding. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince concluded by remarking that AWS's decision to open its first infrastructure region based in Bahrain in early 2019 represents only the latest endorsements of the kingdom's business ecosystem by a top U.S. company.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince met yesterday a delegation from Lockheed Martin, including President of the Middle East African Region, Vice Admiral Anthony L. Wins, and Vice President for International Government Affairs, Nancy Zuzin, on the sidelines of the 2017 Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness welcomed Lockheed Martin to the 13th edition of the Manama Dialogue, emphasizing that the participation of global defense manufacturers such as Lockheed Martin further underscores the importance of this dynamic strategic security Forum to maintain security and stability in the region. His Royal Highness noted the important role of the 70-year defense relationship with the United States in ensuring Bahrain's armed forces are equipped to continue actively participating alongside its regional and international partners to counter terrorism. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted the recent sale of Lockheed Martin F-16 jets to Bahrain as a vital component of the Bahrain Defense Forces BDF's combat readiness strategy. For their part, Vice Admiral Wen Zanzuzin thanked the Kingdom of Bahrain for their opportunity to participate in the forum and praise the extensive efforts that have ensured the success of the Manama Dialogue each year. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday met the Republic of India's Minister of State for External Affairs Mubashar Jawad Akbar on the sidelines of the 2017 Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness noted the strength of long-standing bilateral ties between India and Bahrain and spoke of the importance of broadening cooperation to benefit both countries. His Royal Highness and the Minister of State for External Affairs highlighted the important role played by the Kingdom's comprehensive development program in delivering on the aspirations of Bahrain's citizens. Both sides went on to discuss regional and international issues of common interest. His Royal Highness praised India's long-standing efforts combating terrorism and supporting peace and prosperity on the global level. He went on to stress that extremist ideologies and theocratic regimes have no place in the modern, developed society and highlighted the importance of continued collaboration between international partners in order to counter the threat posed by these groups. His Royal Highness and the Minister of State for External Affairs also discussed the Kingdom of Bahrain's long track record of multiculturalism. For his part, His Excellency expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's important role in strengthening bilateral ties across various fields. In the presence of the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, honorary president of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, the BMMAF, and founder of KHK MMA, His Honor Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Cape Verdean Foreign Affairs Minister, Luis Felipe Lopez, the competitions of the African Heavyweight Boxing Championship began today in Cape Verde, where the final match between KHK boxing team member Faisal Arami and the Congolese boxer Junior Maximus took place. His Highness expressed pleasure in the Kingdom's participation in these sports events, affirming that the participation had achieved many positive results. His Highness noted that the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa's encouragement, motivated His Highness Sheikh Khalid to support the boxing sport to make further achievements for Bahraini sports. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the performance of the boxer Faisal in the championship, asserting his confidence that the boxer will recover from his injury and will once again prepare for upcoming championships, wishing him success and making honorable achievements for the kingdom in the future.
Boxing is a different sport than mixed martial art or cricket or any other sport that we are working on. Uh, in boxing, it's about personalities. You need strong personalities that's going to represent the future. So I think Faisal is one of those personalities. We are still looking into a lot of athletes that are going to be part of KHK Boxing. And I think uh, African Championship, WBC level is uh, the top of the food chain to start with. And uh, as always, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa always starts from the top and builds a strong foundation from the bottom. So uh, there is no, there is no uh, space for losing. We are so happy that uh, His Highness can let us do this fight. You know, it's a huge fight, huge fight for KSK sport, huge fight for KSK boxing. Why? Because immediately that's uh, an African uh, championship. This is the fight of the year. Everybody in Africa is waiting for this. We need to know who is the king of the Africa. And Faisal, it's an amazing fighter, Arami, three times champion in France, uh, champion for all countries that speak French. It's, uh, he used to be the African champion as well on a different uh, uh, type of uh, not a heavyweight. So uh, the other one, Maximus, um, from Congo, based in Germany, never lost, seven fights, seven wins. So this is big, this is big. Cape Verde is so proud to have those two top-notch names in boxing coming here to fight for the title of African heavyweight champion. And I think uh, no matter who's going to win tonight, he has a good chance to fight for the world championship as well. And I'm so happy that today's event is a dream come true here in Cape Verde and have the prince here, have all these people here in Cape Verde. The problem is I broke my, my right hand the second round after I come to to punch with my right, my right hand. Very, very complicated, and my opponent is very, really strong, very good physical. And for me, it's uh, just la left round, just, just left hand. It's very hard. But uh, the, 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 the fight is really close. I lost just one, one point with just one left. Okay, it's not very bad. It's not very good fight, but it's not a very bad fight. Next time, inshallah. <laughs> His Highness Sheikh Khalid had arrived at the Nelson Mandela International Airport in Santiago Island, coming from his residence at Sal Island in Cape Verde. His Highness was received by the Cape Verdean Foreign Affairs Minister Luis Felipe Lopez and the members of the championships organized. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa received today at his office at Qudaybiyah Palace the chairman of the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, Prince Sirkil Faisal, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain and his participation in the Manama Dialogue 2017. The Deputy Premier welcomed Sheikh Sirkil Faisal, hailing the deep rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in light of the bonds between its leaderships and peoples, as well as their common goals and destiny. The two sides reviewed the the issues addressed by the Manama Dialogue and the agreements that the developments of the region require more coordination and cooperation to address the dangers, threats and interventions in the interests of the region. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa received today at his office at Qadabiya Palace Minister of State for Middle East Affairs Ali Sir Burns on the occasion of his participation in Manama Dialogue 2017, hosted by the Kingdom for the 13th time. The two sides discussed the topics addressed by the Manama Dialogue, the effect of the challenges posed on the security of countries, their stability and the future of their people was emphasized, as well as the importance of confronting them through bilateral and collective 
and coordination and cooperation among all countries. The historic relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom were reviewed where Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak and Minister Birds expressed their pleasure over the development of relations at all fields, particularly in light of the visit. The two sides emphasized the keenness on further bolstering bilateral cooperation and coordination to benefit both countries and their people. The Deputy Prime Minister also expressed Bahrain's admiration of the United Kingdom's stance concerning the American administration's decision on Jerusalem and its contradiction with the decisions of the Security Council and international legitimacy. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received today at his office at Gdabiya Palace former Arab League Secretary General Amal Musa on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom to take part in Manama Dialogue 2017. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak welcomed the guests and reviewed with them the topics discussed during the sessions of Manama Dialogue as well as the necessary means to face the dangers that threaten the region and the world. The two sides stressed the importance of joint Arab action, particularly with regard to the cause of Jerusalem. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa commissioned the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to visit Oman to offer condolences on the demise of Turkey bin Mahmoud Al Saeed. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the people of Bahrain to the Sultanate of Oman, Sultan so the Sultan of Oman, Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed, their royal family and the Omani people. He was received by the Deputy Prime Minister for Cabinet Affairs, Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Saeed and the royal family hall in Masqat. Sheikh Ali hailed the deceased contributions to Oman, praying God Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. The Deputy Prime Minister for Cabinet Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for good sentiments which reflects the deep-rooted ties between the two countries, demise of eternal Bin Mahmoud Al Saeed, His Majesty King commissioned Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa to offer condolences. Bahrain Defense Force BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received today Pakistan's Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee General Zubair Mahmoud Hayat for his visit to Bahrain to participate in the 13th IISS Manama Dialogue in the presence of Defense Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma and BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi. The Commander in Chief praised the depth of relations between the two countries and the development it witnessed, especially in the military cooperation field. Bahrain Defense Force BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received today British Chief of the Defense Staff Air Chief Marshal Sir, Sir Stewart Peach on the occasion of his participation in the 13th IISS Manama Dialogue in the presence of Defense Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma and BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief praised the relations and cooperation between the two countries, especially regarding the exchange of experiences and cooperation in the military field. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Honorary Chairman of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation Brief, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the 8th edition of the late His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Hamad Al Khalifa Purebred Arabian Horse Beauty Championship was held, which is organized by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation at the Bahrain International Racing Village. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed pride in the continuous organization of this championship. He also affirmed that this tournament provides a suitable environment for horse owners and staples, pointing out that the championship preserves the original heritage of Bahrain and emphasizes the kingdom has a special advantage in the Arabian horse breeds. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment President of Brief, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, were present at the tournament.
His Royal Highness the Premier's advisor, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received today ahead of the Russian Komi Republic, Sergei Kaplikov, who arrived in Bahrain in the presence of the ambassador of both countries. His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa hailed the religions binding the two countries, the relations binding the two countries, and the development of cooperation in all fields, also discussing a number of topics of joint interest. Under the patronage of the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mulla, a conference themed Human Rights Between Reality and Ambition was held today, which marks the Human Rights Day. More on this report with Habab Al Ghaffar. Human Rights Day is celebrated annually across the world on the 10th of December, as back in 1948, the date was chosen to honor the United Nations General Assembly's adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Honoring the special day, a conference was organized today by the Representatives Council's Human Rights Committee in cooperation with its Secretariat General. The, the speaker has been spoken about internationally in Arabic experience, international experience, African experience. So this will help us a lot to add uh, improving all the legislation laws for the human rights. Kind of celebration of the achievement and improvement which has happened in Bahrain. So many fields, in many fields to, uh, to save the human rights in Bahrain. So we are today uh, with who's taking care about the human rights, like legislation, like the NGOs. Uh, they are sitting together today to discuss all uh, the initiative in this field about the human rights in Bahrain. Representatives and Shura Council members, government officials, heads of diplomatic missions, as well as researchers and specialists from official and non-governmental human rights organizations and societies took part in the conference. I will share in this conference about the achievements and the challenges which is we face it on the Ombudsman Office and the Prisoners and Detainee Rights Commission. One of the success institutions in Bahrain is the Ombudsman Office, which was established in 2013. And uh, based on our reports, uh, I think we win the public credibility. Well, Bahrain celebrates with the rest of the world today the International Day of Human Rights. It's a very important day, and I should emphasize that we should not only celebrate celebrated today because Bahrain in every day of its way of life and the style we celebrate human rights because we're very keen to live that lifestyle. The conference featured a number of sessions on international human rights standards and the roles of legislative, executive, human rights organizations and civil society in protecting and promoting human rights. Human rights international principles, issues within the Arab world, along with Bahrain's achievements in human rights, are discussed today in the International Human Rights Day Conference. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghafoor. The Shura Council held its regular session today, chaired by its speaker Ali bin Salah al Salah, in which it congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day and the anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne, wishing the kingdom progress and prosperity. The Council approved Decree Law Number 28 of 2017 of amending. A number of provisions of Decree Law No. 19 of 1976 on medals, which aims to create a new medal called the Strength Medal that will be added to the country's medals stipulated in Article 1 of Decree Law 19 of 76 on medals. 
Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa of allocating 4,800 housing units in various governorates in the kingdom, the Ministry of Housing continued the distribution of the Northern City's units to beneficiaries. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Housing, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, noted that the Northern City project came to cover a large number of the old housing applications, adding that new cities' projects have been increasing in the past period. He stated that the development and the housing services as a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the directives of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Housing Ministry's Under Secretary noted that the Northern City Project is one of the largest strategic projects the Ministry is implementing as part of the program of building 25,000 housing units. He asserted that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's directives reflect the leadership and government's keenness on meeting citizens needs. The 13th edition of the Manama Dialogue comes to an end today after two days of extensive deliberation on a wide range of topics. More details in this report with Pamela Shaban. The 13th IISS Manama Dialogue concluded its activities on Sunday following two days of intensive discussions over major security concerns in the region and wider world. Several issues dominated the agenda, including the situation in Iraq and the aftermath of ISIS, the Yemeni situation and the Houthi militias and Iranian interference, and the diplomatic challenges facing Syria. We never lose hope. We built our strategy and our policy on Syria in supporting the Geneva One uh, Agreement especially point number 14, which calls for the preservation of the uh, Syrian state and uh, as, as, as the way forward for Syria to stay together and move together. So we, let's, that's the only thing that we have besides the Astana talks of the different countries. The outcomes that would uh, refer to the Syrian leadership is a matter that only in the hands of the Syrian people. The high-level weekend attracted high officials and policymakers from over 20 countries. It provided a significant platform for the states to come together and exchange views on different challenges and reach consensus on ways to dealing with them. The issue of extremism and its negative ramifications was widely present throughout the sessions of the dialogue, and mechanisms to eradicate this phenomenon were widely discussed. Many countries are focusing on counter-narratives to uh, counter the radical narratives of the, of the radical groups. But I feel that uh, you need to also uh, strengthen the community. And to do that, you need to go beyond counter-narratives. You need to uh, create a counter-identity. So what I mean by that is you need to create and articulate the values of uh, each communities, values that will help them strengthen their identities, strengthen their values against the, um, the persuasions of the radicals. Another successful security dialogue hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain in its efforts to secure the region's safety and prosperity. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Mohammed Shaban. The Ministry of Interior provides advanced security services characterized by efficiency, accuracy and the speed of delivery. More in this report. The excellence of the Ministry of Interior is reflected in many authorities, including the nationality, passports and residence affairs. In fact, there are continuous efforts to further enhance the services provided. We are pleased at the Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs to serve all individuals by issuing passports for citizens, residencies for residents, and visas for visitors throughout the kingdom. We audit the documents provided to ensure they are not forced and there are no cases of impersonation. We cooperate on a daily basis with security agencies and judicial authorities to implement their legislations and orders to maintain the security and safety of Bahrain. With the increase in the number of vehicles and travelers on King Fahd Causeway, customs now play a pivotal role in maintaining security and stability. Regardless of the methods used to mislead the customs officers, they shall remain the watchful eye that looks over the kingdom to maintain the people's security. And in line with 2030 vision, the Customs Affairs launched a new strategy to simplify customs duties in order to improve the speed of transporting goods and passengers through King Fahd Causeway. It is only natural for those services to be provided in a framework of community partnership, which has become the core of security performance. 
The services police stations provide to maintain public security are based on two maintenance pillars represented by crime prevention and the deployment of military security patrols, community police, and civil patrols. A specialized team is also giving educational lectures to school and college students on preserving public and private properties and means of prevention against crime. Community service police plays a major role among security agencies. As we achieve community partnership, it is our role to secure movement for students by deploying patrol around schools. Sometimes we help with social cases between neighbors or families. Because of that, we have established an office at the Southern Governorate in which we resolve social cases. This way, we become the link between Ministry of Interior and member of community to maintain security and stability between members of the community. Strengthening the relation between policemen and society is quintessential to achieve the concept of comprehensive security. Today, Field Follow-up affirms that Bahrain's police is keen on keeping up with the latest developments and building on community requirements.